Hello and welcome back to the Real Day Out. Today, we have got two games for you. Bayer Leverkusen in the Champions League, followed up by Deportivo La Coruña in the La Liga. Two massive, massive games today. Uh, we need to win the Champions League and uh, a win in the league, as you can see from this little bit of the table here, could take us right to the very top. So that's very interesting stuff. Let's get into it, shall we? Since you were last here for the Inter Milan game and the Bilbao game, uh, things have been pretty decent, I've got to say, overall. They've been pretty good. Um, obviously, we came back uh, after that Bilbao game, played Abar at home. We managed to win that game 3-1, uh, two goals from Alexander Bedeka and Christian Romero right at the end. After Bilbao, uh, after Bilbao, after Abar took the lead in that game, uh, we looked a bit shaky until the second half, really. That's when we sort of started to, to come into our own. After that... We decide to go with five at the back against Atletico Madrid. In these previous few games, the wingers that we had been using, I mean, Adzic and Orsolini are very good players, but they just didn't seem to be performing for whatever reason. So I thought we'd switch it to five at the back against Atletico Madrid. Uh, Hans Ozanovic scored first, uh, but then Herving Lozano scored for Atletico Madrid later on. That was the end of the game, really. Nothing much happened in that game. I think it was pretty tight, actually. So it, it kind of makes you feel a bit more confident in the five at the back. But at the same time, we didn't really create that many chances. I mean, we stopped a lot of Atletico chances, but we didn't really create all that much either. So uh, it's a little bit hit and miss, but a draw against Atletico was fantastic stuff. We stuck with the five at the back against Monaco. Uh, they took the lead four minutes into it. Harbo got a goal back before half time, before they started to take control of the second half a little bit more. Monaco really starting to, to assert their dominance. So that was a bit unfortunate to lose that game. That's our second Champions League game that we've lost. A bit reminiscent of last season. After that, though, we did bounce back with a 6-2 win away to Valencia, which was very nice, of course. Uh, it doesn't make up for the Valencia debacle last season, but it was still nice to be able to get six goals on the score sheet. And then last time out against Osasuna, we, we did struggle actually quite a bit. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. After after comfortably beating Valencia 6-2, we struggled past uh, Athletic Pampelona Osasuna there. Where they scored in the 29th minute, we scored two in the 70 plus minute to, to, to secure the win there. Wasn't the best result, wasn't the best performance, but we did get the win. So the three points is all that matters. Those results mean that we currently sit joint top of the table with Atletico Madrid. They've just slightly ahead of us on goal difference, uh, both on 17 points. Barcelona, Real Madrid, San Sebastian, Valencia, Villarreal, all below us in the table, which is very, very nice. You'll also be interested to know that Bedeka uh, is the highest average rating player in the league right now. So he's, he's he's living up to the money that we're paying for him, which is ridiculous. Handel Zmanovic, also still top goal scorer. But interestingly, Benjamin Rolheiser, who we sold over summer, has uh, decided to start scoring goals, which is a little bit frustrating, actually, I've got to say, because he never did that for us. Well, he did. He, he got 10 in 17 that season when he had to come on as a substitute a little bit. But last season, when he did play, he was actually awful. Like, he was terrible. And that was part of the reason why I decided to sell him. Uh, but seems to be doing the business for Deportivo. Eight goals from eight appearances. That's pretty decent. Thinking about our strikers, though, we do have some good news. Now, uh, we signed a striker on loan from Chelsea, who's an English striker. But we had three foreign players already, and he counted as a foreign player because England left the EU. So he couldn't play for us. However, since that episode came out, Romero has managed to uh, gain... EU citizenship. I think he's, he's been in Spain for at least two years now. He's got Spanish citizenship, uh, apparently, or EU citizenship. So he's now technically Spanish. So he doesn't count as a foreign player, which means that good old, where is he down here? Chris Bannister, come January, can be registered as a Oviedo player. So we have to wait till January for him. Uh, but he's going to be an Oviedo player. That'll be very useful because I've not been too impressed with Nacho so far. We could just get him on the bench uh, and start playing a few games. He's doing very well in the B team, I'll have you know. He's still playing in the B team, still doing stuff there. Uh, if we look at how he's been doing, as you can see, uh, not, not nine goals, 19 appearances. I mean, that's the other way around, actually, isn't it? Nine, nine appearances, 19 goals. Uh, 8.66 average rating. I mean, he, he's doing pretty well for himself, bless him, in the B team. Uh, so he probably does deserve the call-up to the first team, but uh, he has to wait till January when we can register players again. Right then, this is the formation we're going to use against Bayer Leverkusen today. Uh, we need the win because we lost the opening two games. A loss today really would probably mean we can't qualify into the later stages of the Champions League. So, the lineup is Burke in goal, Cucurella, Sanchez, Romero and Diouf as that back line. Uh, Thomas Partey in that CDM role with Dad and Colono just ahead of him. Adzic on the left. Orsolini on the right, although we make him a bit more supportive actually rather than attacking inside forward. And Osmanovic starts up front as our advance forward. Right then, kickoff is upon us here today in Germany. We're away from home today, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. But I've got a good feeling about it. I've got a good feeling about this game. I think we can come away with a three points today. I think we are much better than uh, that. 
we're, we're clearly much better than Viale because in 20 seconds into the game, Hans Osmanovic gets on the end of a Ricardo Orsolini cross and gives us the lead in this game. Fantastic stuff already. And can we do it a minute later as, as Colonna now on the ball, one minute, 20 seconds of the game, in towards Adic. Osmanovic once again puts it in the back of a net. I'm not quite sure why Adic hasn't been credited with the assist there, but uh, I mean, what a fantastic start to the game. Incredible. I should probably talk to you about the group then, actually. Uh, now that that's happened in those first uh, few moments, uh, Monaco played Inter Milan in the early kickoff. Uh, they won. I'm not quite sure what the scores, but they won. Uh, so that's why Monaco are on nine points. Inter Milan drawn one, lost one, won one. So that's why they're on four points. As things stand, we are beating Leverkusen, which puts us on three points and means that Leverkusen would have lost two and drawn one. Uh, they won one game against Inter Milan. So. It, it, actually, it's quite good that Monaco beats uh, Inter Milan, sorry, because it means that we are only sit one point behind Inter Milan. It means that we're still close, close there behind them. Uh, it means that in the game we play against Inter Milan, anything could happen and perhaps we could get the upper hand and qualify for the later stages. Adzic now on the ball uh, in behind the defence, actually, can put another dangerous cross in. And 18 minutes into this game, Hans Osmanovic has picked up a hat-trick. Oh, that's his first one of the season, actually, but that must be, his, I think it's his 12th goal of the season, that one. So he's doing very, very well this season, Hans Osmanovic. I'm not quite sure what makes him so deadly as a striker, because really, attribute-wise, he isn't the best out there. Uh, you know, the star star rating-wise, he really isn't the best out there, but seems to score a handful of goals, gets himself to be top goal scorer in the league and things like that. I mean, he's he's a great player. He's now got a, we signed a new contract with him, uh, in between episodes. Uh, he's now got a minimum fee release clause of £50 million, which is a lot of money. So if someone wants to pay that for him, I'd, I wouldn't really mind too much because that's a lot of money that we could get someone else with who could be equally as good. This would also be our first win in the Champions League. I don't think we won a game in the Champions League last season. Then we drew... But I don't think we won a game, actually, thinking about it. We may have done. I may be lying to you, but I don't remember winning, at least. Uh, but a pretty good game so far, I've got to say. First half's been excellent. Let's just keep performance going in the second half and hope for the best. Looks like Bayer Leverkusen, though, had a decent team uh, half-time team talk, although their, uh, their striker did get tackled there after being through and goal. Now, Dad has a chance to uh, to try and show some distribution. Colono on the ball, puts it in towards Hans Osmanovic, out towards Orsolini. Adzic was waiting, but he was in the offside position, so Orsolini he had to take the shot, basically. It was a decent opportunity for us. Uh, it doesn't quite come off, but we've got the corner. The corner comes in, clearly, but only as far as Dad, who know we know he can pump them in uh, and drill them in from a distance. And a free kick now for us on the edge of the area, apparently. Now, oh, it's right on the edge. Colonna to take it. I think it's too close to cause any danger, and it was too close as he puts it wide. Well, I'm pretty happy with this game. If we can just see it out now, a uh, 3-0 win would be fantastic stuff in the Champions League. I would love that. Interestingly, we've, we've taken 1,413 fans to this game. I swear we don't take anywhere near that to the Sporting Gijón derby that we have or any other away game in Spain. So why why we've taken this many to Germany, I don't know. But, I mean, I won't complain. But it's obviously helping the 12th man out there cheering on our fans. But... I'd, I'd like them to come to more away games, you know, in actual Spain. Corner for us now. Orsolini puts it in. Cleared, though, but only as far as Thomas Partey, who finds Dad in space on the edge of the area, who gets in behind the defence. Orsolini was there, and it is now 4-0 in this game. It's by Leverkusen. With 17 minutes to go or so, I, I, I don't think Leverkusen will get back into this. Of course, it reminds us of the Valencia debacle, whenever I say anything like that. So we won't get too excited just yet but I think we are about to pick up our first three points of the Champions League. We'll make a few changes, though, actually, with 10 minutes to go or so. Uh, Dad is looking a bit tired out there, so we'll bring Bedeka on for him. Sanchez looking tired, so Vazquez will come on for him. Uh, and there are two changes we'll make for now, I think. Uh, the only two changes we'll make in the whole game, I think. Uh, we'll rotate things a little bit for the game uh, coming up in a few days' time. And there we go. A pretty decent result there. 4 0 against Bayer Leverkusen. I just noticed on the bench as well, this guy, Alper Cilic. I mean, he, he is he is one of the guys that I really wanted to sign. He was my first choice centre-back that I wanted to sign. And he's on the bench at Leverkusen. He could have been playing for us in this game, but no, he's on the bench, which is a bit frustrating. There we go. Big 4-0 win. Uh, excellent stuff in terms of our chances of qualifying for the later stages of a European competition. I don't really mind too much if we only get uh, Europa League. It's still European football, uh, and we've got a better chance of winning that as well, to be fair. So I wouldn't mind too much if we really got third in the group and got there. Deportivo in three games time. So, of course... Uh, we'll do the usual rest up the players, make sure that, that, that the ones that we want to use at least uh, will be fit enough to play in the Deportivo game. We will we'll rotate things a little bit. We'll maybe bring on players and, and Meza and things like that. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty excited with the Caruni game now after that thumping win there. And to top it all off, the under-19s also beat Leverkusen under-19s 4-0, uh, which is pretty good going. They lost to Monaco, actually. Uh, we played the game, but obviously Monaco drawn with Inter. So it looks like Oviedo under-19s are once again going to be going through from their group in the under-19s Champions League.
Oh, I'll tell you what, actually. This Caruni game coming up on Saturday. And then we've got the Spanish Cup on the Wednesday afterwards. I reckon we try and stay actually pretty full strength this Caruni game and then rotate a lot for that Mallorca game uh, in the Spanish Cup. I feel like that's actually a little bit better to do. Right, then most of the players actually looking pretty fit after that game. Uh, we will swap Colono for Bedeca, though, because he's the, the most tired out there. Uh, and Bedeca did deserve a game to be played. He's played very well when he has played this season. Uh, but other than that, I don't think, I don't feel a need to make any changes. Actually, we'll bring Harbour on for Thomas Party because Harbour also deserves a few game time, a bit of game time as well. But other than that, I'm going to keep it the exact same because uh, I'm pretty happy with how the team are playing right now, how they're, how they're doing, how they're gelling. Uh, they're all looking pretty fit still, so we may as well actually play it for this game and then swap it all out for the, the cup game against a team that are, what, two divisions below us, I think? Right then, kickoff is upon us here. Uh, we're at home today this time against Deportivo La Coruña, uh, which is pretty exciting, I've got to say. It's not actually that exciting, is it? I don't know why I said it was exciting. It's just another game, Tom. Deportivo sitting pretty mid-table. Uh, nothing nothing too special. Where are they? They're, they're 10th. Although saying that, they have they have scored as many goals as us this season. Um, so they've probably been quite unlucky with a few draws. Now, it's probably quite a good job, actually. We're staying with a, with a pretty pretty decent uh, team, actually. Just, uh, if, if we put the youngsters in, perhaps they would have abused that. They've clearly got quite a good attack. Uh, as Osmanovic now on the ball uh, with a chance to play it back towards Dad on the edge of the area. Doesn't go in the back end. And actually, I've just realised it's, it's Rollheiser playing for Deportivo. That's why he's, he's scored eight goals in the league so far this season. So he's, he's a danger man. Hopefully, though, because he used to play for us, we should know all about him. So I'm, I, hopefully we can just stop him in his tracks from scoring. I said that now. Let's see him score a hat-trick or something like that. But Romero clears up the ball there, plays it into Harbo. Bedeka now back on the ball, coming forward with it. Plays it out towards Adzic. Adzic gets us. Oh, just tips it past his man. Uh, but doesn't quite get on to the end of it. And now Deportivo can try and counter tackle, although that pass wasn't great. Osmanovic now coming off the back of his hat-trick midweek. Uh, plays it in towards Adzic, but Adzic's shot not the best. Stat-wise, doing very, very well so far. Eight shots to zero shots. That's what you like to see. What I don't like to see, though, is the scoreline still at nil. No, I'd like to see us get a few more goals. But Decker now on the ball, looking like he could try and uh, and change that. Orsoli now with the ball back to Bedeka. Can Bedeka get it out wide to Diouf? He does. Diouf with the cross back to Bedeka on the edge of the area, who just scoots in. Everyone leaves him. His shot got a big deflection and back to Orsolini. And Orsolini can open the scoreline here. 1-0 Oviedo. That goal does put us on top of the table temporarily. Of course, Atletico Madrid uh, still have to play later on. Orsolini once again with a cross. Adzic this time hits the crossbar by looks of things. Uh, and we've hit the woodwork there for the first time in this game, which isn't very good, I've got to say. That's our second clear-cut chance, apparently. That also popped up. Uh, so it's nicely that we're creating some clear-cut chances for ourselves. Dad now on the ball. His shot from a long way out there blocked. And looks like Caruni were about to go through, but the highlight ended. So who knows? Goal lines don't matter too much at the moment, I've got to say. Uh, it's more the three points that we're after right now. Uh, of course, it, it all comes down to to head-to-head to -head records as well. So as long as we don't lose to anyone, then it, it's all right. You know, you can draw. That's when the goal difference matters if you have two draws. But other than that... It's not too much of an issue, actually, goal difference in this league. Uh, although I do bang on about it sometimes. And we've just helped ourselves a bit more with goal difference there. As Hans Osmanovic uh, looked like got on the end of an Orsonini cross, but must have had a, a deflection, which put it into the path of him to score that goal instead. So, obviously, 2, Karunia 0. It's looking rosy. Rollheiser is on £28,000 at uh, <laughs> Deportivo. I, I mean, Berkley Erza, what's he on? I mean, actually, he's probably on more than 28000 I can't see it, because obviously it's all bugged out on this side. It always is. But I'm telling you, he, he would be one of the highest earners in our entire squad if he was on £28,000 at Oviedo. Well, nothing happening in the second half so far, but I'm still pretty pleased with uh, not letting them have a single shot yet. Uh, if we can get to the end of the game, they've not had a single shot. That would be very, very impressive considering that they've scored joint amount most of goals in the league uh, at the start of this game apart from us. Although, looks like they may have a shot here now, although it's cleared and Adzic can get rid of it before they get a shot on goal. Orsolini now on the counter-attack. Uh, can he beat his man? No, he can't. Roll high, sir. Doesn't have the pace for whatever reason to beat Romero there in that ball. Now Diouf can uh, try and launch the attack. Not quite the counter-attack we had, but uh, another attack at the very least. But Deccan out, pretty central with a great ball to Osmanovic there, who oh, is usually very good in that area, trying to get past his men. But uh, the ball forward uh, by Karunian wasn't the best, and we've intercepted it again once again on the attack. But Decker in towards Orsolini, who just puts it wide of the post. I think we could have had a few more goals today if we had a little bit more luck. Let's make a few changes then uh, with, with 20 minutes or so to go. Uh, I d I'm going to bring Mezer on for, for Adzic. Adzic has not played very well at all apparently today. Not quite sure why. Uh, winger on attack. We'll also bring players on for... Oh, no, we'll leave Orsolini on actually. I reckon we'll leave Orsolini on. We'll bring Vasquez on actually. We'll bring Vasquez on for Sanchez 
at the back there. So two youngsters coming on there for the final 20 minutes or so of the game. Oh, the stadium expansion must be finished. I, I can't say I remember getting a, a message about the stadium expansion being finished, but 33,673, that's the biggest attendance ever at Oviedo. So it's nice to have you here for that as well. Obviously, an extra an extra few thousand of you squeeze into the stadium for this game. That's pretty, pretty exciting. Hopefully, this should mean that when we have Champions League games, we're going to be raking in a lot more money. Hopefully, we'll be making that... Uh, you know, an extra, uh, extra, extra few hundred thousand, I think, off, off Champions League tickets and things like that. That would be great. The game has finished. It's 2 0. Unfortunately, Karuni managed to get two shots in right at the end, apparently, which is very unfortunate. I am, I'm, I'm actually quite cross with the boys for that. How dare you let them have shots? Uh, a few players looking complacent, apparently. So, uh, let's not have, let's guard against complacency going forward. Everyone seems to gain focus apart from Orsolini, who looks stressed, but. I'm going to leave them looking stressed. That could be detrimental, actually. That could be detrimental. Right then, a 2 0 win over Karunia. We'll just continue the game quickly. Uh, I don't know when Atletico play. I don't know how many games are going to play in this little bit here, but I'd like to see if Atletico win or not. Oh, we've got to get through Real Madrid first and then the Atletico game, but Espanyol down in 18th. Uh, it's probably pretty likely that they'll win. Oh, Espanyol drew with Atletico 0 0, which means that we do finish today's episode two points clear at the top of the table. Also said uh, Real Madrid lost, so we're five points clear of Real Madrid as well. Uh, Barcelona could win and get in there as well, be a point behind us. But we are going to finish today's episode clear at the top of the table. Wonderful. Uh, next episode, then we're going to do we're going to do a three game special. We're going to do Inter Milan. Uh, Cordoba and AS Monaco all next episode. Um, we'll miss out with the Leverkusen game, but we'll do these two, which will be quite exciting. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure you do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I will see you next time for some more real deal action.